When working with a MySQL database using PHP, there are two supported ways of making the connection. MySQL I and PHP Data Objects, also referred to as PDO. PDO has the advantage of using a common set of methods across a wide variety of databases. It is newer and widely supported. It will be used in this video. Refer to the official PHP documentation for details. The URL is shown in the video. To create a PDO connection, you will need four pieces of information. One, the server name. Two, the database name. Three, the proxy user name. And four, the proxy user password. In addition, you will need to know the type of database to which you are connecting. As allowed, an option will be added to handle errors that may occur. Begin by creating a PHP page inside of a folder where utility functions will be stored. The folder will be named Library, and the page will store our PDO connection function and will be named connections.php. The file could hold more than one connection function, but for now we'll hold only one. It is suggested that a PHP comment be placed at the top of the file explaining what the file does. In the file, create four variables to hold the values for the connection items previously mentioned. If you remember from the video where the proxy user was created, the name of the server is localhost, the proxy user is iClient, the database is PHP Motors, and the password was generated by the PHP MyAdmin tool, and you should have copied and stored it. Find and add the password to the variable. As mentioned, there is a fifth variable that is required by the PDO. It is referred to as a DSN string and should be constructed as shown in the video. It uses two of the variables already created and the string is assembled using PHP concatenation. Next, an error handling mechanism will be added as an array with a key and value stored into a variable. This variable will be used when the connection object is created. With all of the variables created, we will use a try-catch block to build the connection. If it succeeds, a connection is created and returned. If it fails, the catch block will handle the error. For testing purposes only, we will echo a message indicating if it worked and a different message if it fails. These messages will be replaced in a minute with the actual operational code. Because we want this to be a function, we will surround all of the existing code within a function. Once the function is built, we will call the function on the page. Be sure to remove this function call once the testing is done. Be sure your servers are running and then run the file in a browser. If the connection works or fails, you should see the appropriate message in your browser window. If you see the failure message, double check your code to make sure everything is correct. You can also compare your code to that shown in the video. If it works, try breaking it intentionally to see that the error message also displays. Once we are sure that everything is working, we will take two final steps. First, we will create a generic server error view, and if the connection fails, we will deliver the generic view, informing the site visitor that an error occurred. Be sure to test that this view is delivered if the connection fails. Second, we will replace the success message with operational code to return the connection object. Finally, we will once again test the function. This time, if the function works, a blank screen should appear in the browser. This is because the object is returned, but nothing is being done with it.
If the connection fails, the generic error view will be delivered to the browser. With everything in place and tested, we will delete or comment out the function call in the connections.php page, leaving only the connection function as operational code. The file is now ready to be used when we need to connect to the database as the dynamic site is built.